Good morning, guys. I just wanted to do kind of a little brief uh, video on profile cylinders. Now, I know these are really popular uh, European. Uh, that's pretty much all they use over there. And I know I've got some international followers, so y'all are probably just like yawn, whatever. But the North American, uh, while I did that, let me point out, since the first pin is, or the first set screw is always exposed, it's always rusted and harder to get out. So you may have problems with that. Use lubricant if necessary. But on North American style, you always want to hopefully run across the screw cap versions, which these are and there are a few handful of different styles way less than again overseas in fact I've got two different styles here these are not multi point these are not top bottom and, and edge point these are simply edge one point locking but anyway what I'm doing here is just dumping out all the pins and on these you do have to make sure it's good to shine a little flashlight down in there or just run your wrench down in there and make sure it's empty, which it is. This is a lorry wrench um, and it fits those perfectly. So the two different styles, this one has, when to get these off the door you got to turn it, the thumb turn. And on these you had a little mechanism on the right underneath the thumb turn that you have to push down to be able to turn that thumb turn the rest of the way so that it lines up <laughs> so that it lines up like that and once you turn it back to us once you put it back in the door and turn it back to a certain position that will snap up and that pretty much locks the thumb turn into position so that it only turns a certain way. Uh, later on they came out with one same way except you will notice it does not have a little tab to do that. So when you run across those you have to simply get a sharp scribe and reach into there and it's kind of hard to do on the door because it's like this but if you reach in and jab the little metal piece and just pull down it'll allow you to rotate the thumb turn to the right position to get it out and same way again once you put it back in the door as you turn it you're watching this little piece right here that's spring loaded it will snap into position and fall into the groove so that is how you deal with those. Now I've already rekeyed this one. I've got four here to do, three of the old style, and uh, that you looks like they use shorter set screws. And the one thing you, you it takes regular slide keys. We're gonna check it again. The key is spring loaded. There's a little spring loaded doodad in the inside here that makes it engage with the thumb turn or the uh, cam on the inside if it doesn't go all the way in and doesn't engage so reading this key it would be 58526 but typically you have to drop a pin so if we started off with five we see it won't turn whereas if you drop the five to a four it turns. So 58526 would turn into 474 1 5. And if you're not sure or if you're having problems with it, just do one pin at a time. So, in other words, you would load a pin. Are top pins, these are kind of long top pins. So, if you're not sure, if you're having trouble figuring out, just do number one pin, put your spring in, and 
and hold it and check the key and then do the next cut so that's what you want to do is if if you can't figure out you know why the depths aren't working for you just do them one pin at a time so I've already done that first one just to verify these are the style that you have to drop the pin it's kind of a crapshoot you never know which ones you do have to drop a pin which ones are level so you just kind of got to wing it but almost all of them you do have to drop a height a level so if it's a five cut on the key you'd have to use a four pin so then we simply come back in, put our springs in. Ideally, if you're doing a lot of these, and I've never gotten around to it, but I would cut off a portion of this uh, hex wrench and chuck it up in a drill and use it to kind of get these in quicker if I had a bunch. I would definitely could use it on this one, but you also have to be real careful not to drill that thing down in there and I would only really do that for speed because some of these houses have 10 or 20 patio doors and this can take quite a while just in screwing and unscrewing these little things so if I was to use a drill like that I would zip it down to I would zip it down to just as it hit the surface so using a drill I would go drill 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 stop about right there and then just come through and hand tighten the rest of them because you don't want to torque it certainly don't want to use an impact driver so again we're going to get this one done you've got to make sure these are all flush because it has to be flush to go back into the lock itself and then after we got that one keyed we check our key and we see it's not working so when you have that problem now obviously I keyed the other one the same so this newer style cylinder must be a little different so when you have this issue really the easiest thing to do is start at the tip cut because sometimes that tip cut the spacing of the keys is kind of weird so we're going to dump that last pin back out and we're going to try the key and that's not it either so then we're going to progress back to the next one now I kind of got overconfident in this one because I was I think thinking that because that other one worked this one will work the same way and it's not so we're going to dump all these back out looks like we're on number three cut nope I know the number one worked because we tried it so, number one works. Uh, must have been that second pin that I messed up. So we had guessed it as eight. So let's go seven. Maybe I dropped a pin in there that wasn't supposed to go. So we're going to kind of oddball check it. The pin is not actually falling down into the chamber. If you look in there it doesn't seem to be falling into the chamber that's because there were two pins in there let's try that again seven all right seven's working now so now we're going to do it the slow way again slow way being put our top pin in put our spring in finger cap it and try it <sighs> and here's that thing there you run into you run into these problems so we're going to drop that back out 
Our number four was good. So we're going to go to eight. See if eight does it. Eight works. So for some reason we bounced from four back to regular cuts. Let's see how eight does in the cylinder. Just dropping, dropping stuff left and right. So eight works. So I wonder if we're four or five. What do you think? Four or five. Let's go five. Let's go five. Did I put two? And they have four, eight, five. And if you want to, before you even load the top hand, you can get down in there and kind of look at it. So, five's not working. Golly gee. Four, eight, four. 484, so the next one is 2. You thinking it's 2 or 1? Let's try 2. 484, 2. It's not 2, it's 1. 484, 2, 1. Uh, I lost a couple of springs earlier. Profile springs are very bouncy. Very, very bouncy. So, 48421, and that was a 6, which I knocked down to 5. Which, thank 5. Very weird how that spacing got kind of foobar. 484. Not five. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Makes you want to pull your hair out sometimes. It's got to be six, so it goes back to zero. Four, eight, four, six, four, eight, four, one, six. Crazy. Four, eight, four, one, six. That's it. Four eight four one six. <sighs> All right. Well, you got to see what happens when you deal with Americanized profile cylinders. Wildly erratic depths and across the boards, different, different little unique styles. I unfortunately just noticed my video went over a little bit and on this GoPro as it gets it does it in 12 block 12 minute time blocks but it actually kind of freezes up and screws up the video at the from about 11:15 to 12 so I missed about 30 seconds of that so if you missed that sorry about that I try to that's why I try to keep an eye on this sucker as much as possible so that I can just stop it when it gets to 11 minutes. I may need to start doing my phone as a timer. Alright, so I got them all flush, tightened down, and keys. So now you just have to remember what you did that time. And uh, take you through it real quick. We got some pins that can be dumped. So, just to recap, since. Uh, may have missed that take your I wonder sometimes it's best to start with the short end just for the leverage and just break that seal because sometimes the factory gets a little carried away their robot who screws these in and I'm sure it does it five at a time uh, with a version of the drill thing uh, sometimes they torque them way down and it's just easier to break it and then use the longer shaft. So, going back over it, unscrewing. You'll notice I have the retainer screw. This is the screw that holds the cylinder in the door. 
and most I have it and that is because most of the time I leave most of the hardware at the door itself because there's no point bringing in anything other than the all right very important otherwise it'll screw you up check it make sure get rid of that we can uh, I've got to give the customer her key ring back so let's get rid of those put it on here all right let's see if the same holds true like I said wildly erratic so we had four eight four was it one? I think it was one. One. Six. Yep, seems to be. You can look down in there and turn it and kind of gauge whether there's too much of a little gap in there. Four, eight, four, one, six. So top pin, top pin. Top pin, top pin, top pin. So I have a, as soon as I get done with this last cylinder, luckily they slap back in the door pretty quick and I'm out of here because I have a hospital, one or one and a half year old passage lever, cylindrical lever handle that is not opening from a pass a passenger a patient room passage lever that the maintenance crew who doesn't do locks I, I do all their locks but they call me for most everything but they try to handle it themselves but this one apparently uh, it's not opening from the outside the plunger the latch plunger he called it the plunger it's, it's you know the latch is not retracting it's just a passage cylindrical lever Corbin Russ one brand new and on this same job they have outfitted many floors and I have found that the hub or the retractor latch retractor on the inside of the cylindrical body is made out of super crap aluminum or metal and they break easily so i foresee in the future many many problems with that and he said he took the outside lever off assuming by hitting the pin and pulling it off and he was able to stick something down in there and turn it and it turns but it's not retracting the latch so my first thought was, well, I'm going to grab my under-the-door tool and try to turn the lever handle, which I'll probably take it in and give it a try. But if the hub's broken, the interior lever handle is not going to do a thing either. So I am going to be forced to do a incredibly messy opening if I'm not able to just shim the latch. So what I'll probably do is take some shim material in, some air wedges, and see if I can't get the door shimmed open. And if not, it is going to be some appropriately sized drill holes to get into that bad boy. So, last one, slipping them back in the door, headed out to the hospital to do that. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, I don't know if this is going to be a whole separate video, but if not, then it'll be part of another video. So, thanks for watching, and y'all have a good day. This makes like the third or fourth one of these that has happened and um, it's really irritating me that they charge so much for these lever handle locks and they make the part that literally moves every time you turn a key in uh, a crap metal and it breaks. So if you're in a room or if you have a room with one of these lever handles on it and the latch retractor mechanism which i'll show you here in a second cracks apart you can't open it from the inside or outside and that's a danger because uh, hospitals use these other facilities use these types of locks and it's an instant break so if somebody's locked in the room there's going to be a massive problem because usually maybe a patient or something that may need a medical care and uh, obviously at that point you'd have to force the door open or break it down to get in but 
this is a issue that Corbin Russ one, if they have not already figured that out, they need to fix the problem and start making the latch <laughs> retractor mechanism out of a real metal and not a metal that totally bust apart all of a sudden. So I'm going to show you this. I didn't get video on site, but I got a couple of pictures. And really, there's only one way, one or two ways to get past that. And as you can see in the picture here, having to drill a small hole um, to be able to try to pull the latch uh, back to get in the door is pretty much one of the only ways to do it. And uh, again, Corbin Russell just needs to fix that problem if they haven't already. So it's a danger, it's a life safety issue because somebody could get stuck in the room and have a medical emergency. And again, there's no way in or out. As soon as that thing breaks, you cannot turn it. You cannot open the door from the inside or outside. So if Corbin Russell is listening to this, I suggest that you take care of that little problem with your new production locks because you might be facing a little legal issue one day if this happens in the wrong place at the wrong time. So my hair's all messed up, but anyway just to preface this short video clip of what went on there um you'll see here you know it broke again so y'all get it taken care of jeez All right, guys, leaving our hospital customer who had a broken Corbin Russell lever handle. So this is the second or third one. The latch retractor on the inside of the cylindrical body is made out of a crap cast metal, and it snaps. And when that happens, you can't open the door from the inside or outside. So, yep, after a couple of carefully placed drills, got it open. So, we're out of here.